coming into London Airport on the way home from New York were two prominent men of Gibraltar. They were returning from the United Nations, where they had left the Committee of 24 in no doubt that the 25,000 people of the little colony do not want any change in their status. Sir Joshua Hasson and Mr. Peter Isola may have their differences at times in the Legislative Council, but on the present issue, they speak as one man. Gibraltar means to stay British. The Rock, an unmistakable picture anywhere in the world. And among seafaring nations, the name The Rock is thoroughly familiar. What a bustling, delightful town lies in the shadows of that famous promontory. For close on 250 years, Gibraltar has been an ocean gateway to the east, a bastion fortified in the defense of freedom. There's more real liberty enjoyed here to the square mile than is to be found almost anywhere else on the continent. No wonder it's popular with tourists and travelers from all parts of the world. Twenty-five thousand on so small an area calls for good modern accommodation. That is something Gibraltar undoubtedly provides. There's a lot of work entailed in the efficient upkeep of an important base and a great deal in the general business of the town. A lot of work and a very contented and prosperous population to do it. All of one mind and unmistakable determination to stay British. Nobody visiting the rock goes away without seeing the apes and everybody is told the old story that so long as the entertaining creatures stay at Jib, the colony will remain British. True to their kind, they're obsessed with hygiene. Another thing most visitors see is the water catchment scheme. Water is the one thing of which the colony is in short supply, so every drop counts. Every now and then, not so much from Spain, which is quite happy behind its frontier, but from rather interfering persons from other countries, comes the cry, although Spaniards very happily cross the border into Jib every day to work, attracted by high wages, the colony ought to belong to Spain. Incidentally, the 11,000 Spaniards on the payroll aren't the whole story. They have dependents, wives and families and mothers. And that makes a total of more than 40,000 living in Spain who are directly supported by Gibraltar. That's something to boast of for a territory only a few square miles in area. This was among the many points mentioned, no doubt, by Sir Joshua and Mr. Peter. There's really no need to say, welcome to Gibraltar. All whose business or enjoyment takes them there have always known it to be a friendly place. And thousands of sailors in the Royal Navy have welcomed a stay at the Rock. The acid test of good government is the happiness or otherwise of the people. Apply that standard to Gibraltar and there's no denying that we must be one of the best governed places on the earth. It becomes evident when you see them at work. A factory owned by Sir Peter Russo, Minister of Housing and Economic Development, is typical. When these pictures were taken, the people of the colony knew that the chief minister and the leader of the opposition would very soon be home again. It was known, too, that they had once again prevented that Committee of 24 from asserting that Spain had a just and rightful claim to the territory. as one nowadays expects airliners to be, arrived the aircraft bringing the delegates on the last stage of their journey home.
Not unnaturally, Sir Joshua and Mr. Peter were jubilant. This was the kind of homecoming that any statesman could wish for. Mission accomplished and a grateful people at journey's end. Sir Peter Russo congratulated Sir Joshua, and no doubt Mr. Peter Isola and his wife were pleased that he was the other hero of the day. This was an occasion that made nonsense of that old saying, a prophet is never without honor save in his own country. Surely the whole population of the colony must have joined in the welcome. In a nutshell, the feeling of Gibraltarians, British we are, British we stay. In Mackintosh Square, the people had a real opportunity to make it clear to the chief minister and the opposition leader how deeply they appreciate the splendid work done at UNO on the colony's behalf. And, of course, the huge crowd expected that now Sir Joshua would tell them all about it. What a contrast to Mackintosh Square was the quietude of the government secretariat garden, where Sir Joshua discussed the matter with the other ministers of the Legislative Council. When he left for New York, he had, of course, their complete confidence. But no one can guarantee that good sense will always prevail in a United Nations committee meeting. The Honorable Peter Isola and other members of the opposition now joined the ministers. Mr. Isola probably wished, with Sir Joshua Hassan, that the members of the Committee of 24 could have been in McIntosh Square. Surely it would have proved to them that whatever may be the shortcomings of some colonies, Gibraltar has no complaints. As for self-determination, where could you find a happier example? Gibraltar itself sums up the whole thing in six words. British we are, British we stay.